Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss conjunctivitis. Um, conjunctivitis is a really common um, patient complaint. Most of you have probably had it at some point in your life, likely as a child, um, and thankfully it's normally fairly doesn't require treatment, but it's just not normally vision threatening. Um, normally it can be treated and then the patient some instances where um, it can be vision therapy uh, threatening, particularly if it becomes keratitis, which we'll talk about. Um, in this video, I'm largely going to focus on bacterial and viral causes of conjunctivitis. Um, there are also infections that happen in all other parts of the eye, um, parasitic infections, fungal infections. I'm not going to talk about them in this video as bacterial and viral conjunctivitis are far more. All right, so the first thing we need to think about with conjunctivitis, all conjunctivitis is characterized by red eyes, but not all red eyes are conjunctivitis. So um, you could have, say, um, a subconjunctival hemorrhage or even a uh, hemorrhage in the actual globe, which will in the eye, um, in the actual eyeball, um, and that is obviously not conjunctivitis. Um, that's a hemorrhage, so it's different. Um, but a lot of the time when you're looking at conjunctivitis, what you're seeing is pink eye, right? I mean, that's what we used to call it in school is pink eye. And really, it's just that the eye is red. But just because you see a bright red eye does not mean it's conjunctivitis. But let's talk about when it is. Um, the conjunctiva is generally pretty transparent. But when it's inflamed, that's when we're going to get that pink or red um, appearance, kind of at a distance. Um, when you examine fine blood vessels, and those are termed injection, these are different than like extravasated blood, which is what you see in subconjunctival hemorrhage. Um, often conjunctivitis is referred to as something known as acute conjunctivitis. Um, if you think about any time you've had conjunctivitis in the past months and months and months, it's just kind of like you woke up and your eye was bright red and inflamed. Um, and rather not your entire eye, your conjunctiva. Um, so when we think about the f acute conjunctivitis, there's actually four different types, and we're going to talk about each of them a little bit. Um, the prevalence of each in pediatric versus adult populations, particularly when I'm talking about bacterial conjunctivitis versus viral conjunctivitis. Bacterial conjunctivitis is more common in kids, whereas viral conjunctivitis is more common in adults. Now, there's this kind of epidemiology especially skews, and that's um, parents of young children or people who spend a significant amount of time around young children, um, they actually wind up also contracting bacterial conjunctivitis at a fairly... Um, this year, it seems like the conjunctivitis sign has been up on the classroom to my son's school for about three months, and I also know that the teachers, unfortunately, have contracted it a couple times too. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how incredibly, um, how incredibly infectious it is that both children and adults are time around each other. So we can also break um, acute conjunctivitis into a couple of different classes. So when you think about acute conjunctivitis, you should think infectious, which would be kind of your bacterial and viral, and non-infectious, which is kind of all other inflamed um, conjunctiva. When you think non-infectious, you need to think allergic, so basically, um, if you walk through a smoky room and you're allergic to smoke and your eyes start watering, that would be allergic um, versus non-allergic, infectious non-allergic conjunctivitis. Most of the time, this is essentially just something's in your eye. Um, it's normally not related to an infectious or inflammatory process. The discharge tends to be more watery, mucoserious, than pus. Um, usually the cause is kind of a transult, um, like an eyelash in your eye, or um, you know, a common thing is you're doing some sort of you know, woodworking and you didn't wear your safety goggles and something got in your eye. We do often sometimes see this one with patients who have what's called dry eye. Now, dry and we can see kind of this intermittent 
um, redness um, or discharge. Um, and many patients may interpret these symptoms as being related to either an infectious cause or an allergic cause. But really dry eye is that your eyes are not making quality tears to keep them um, suitably moisturized. And most of the time, this is actually an inflammatory cause um, that's leading to kind of the destruction or inhibition of good tear production. Okay, so now we'll move on to allergic conjunct infectious um, conjunctivitis causes. Okay, allergic conjunctivitis. Um, typically, this one is going to be caused by airborne allergens. So right now, it's spring in Chicago. So everywhere you go, we're finally starting to see sun and buds on the trees and everything. And it's wonderful, but that means there's a lot of allergens in the air. Pollen in the air, um, tree pollen in the air. You know, also, I'm allergic to pollen, so that's the one I'm keeping, um, keeping an eye on. But ragweed in the air, all of these things that people have kind of airborne allergies to. Um... So the allergens contact the eye, and then you have kind of a normal type 1 hypersensitive. So if I'm, say, allergic to tree pollen, I probably already have some IgE that is already bound to a mast cell that when it actually cross-links on this mast cell leads to the mast cell all sorts of histamines and prostaglandins and um, eosinophilic uh, chemotaxic markers, um, platelet activating factors, all of these things that essentially are going to lead to um, inflammation, right? So we're going to have increased cytokine production of cells. We're going to have um, loosening of tight junctions. We're going to have tear production. We're going to have smooth muscle contraction. So we're essentially going to get a nice inflammatory response in the eyes or um, other people talk about it um, in the sinuses, right? Because you get that runny nose during um, allergy season, they call it. Characterized by some histamine release, eosinophils, um, platelet activating factors, things like that. Because this is non-infectious, we need to think about kind of normal symptoms of allergy. So first off, itching. Itching tends to be kind of the big symptom that people respond. It's the cardinal symptom. And it's kind of important because it's the itching that kind of differentiates it from viral conjunctivitis. Viral conjunctivitis feels more like burning, whereas um, with allergic conjunctivitis, I want you to think of a little kid that's like kind of walking around going like this all day, constantly itching their face and their um, mucosal uh, passages, okay? Um, you're going to have bilateral redness, right? Because aller allergies are typically systemic. So it's not like the infection started in one eye and moved to the other. It's normally bilateral with allergy. And it's watery. It's mucoserious. Recruiting a ton of neutrophils and macrophages to come and eat some pathogen and then die during oxidative burst. No, it's just mass cell degranulation leading to massive tear production. That's all. So it's generally pretty watery. Um, patients will normally have some sort of specific allergy history. They'll have some sort of atop documented before, or they'll have other symptoms of atopy, um, seasonal allergies, sinus headaches, things like that. When we look at the actual conjunctiva, um, you're going to see that they have this kind of diffuse injection with a follicular hiva and this kind of profuse watery mucoserious discharge, okay? So you can kind of see it's all just watery. We're not seeing any sort of globular mucus here. We've got kind of diffuse redness of the um, fine blood vessels here, and we're seeing a lot of um, all this um, tears. Okay. On to viral conjunctivitis. So viral conjunctivitis, like I said before, is typically what we're going to see in adults. Most of the time, it is caused by adenoviruses. Um, I normally teach adenoviruses early in the M1 year when I talk about things for um, Epstein-Barr virus because it kind of it kind of presents in most patients kind of similarly. Um, and it's going to be with um, many different serotypes. So there's no kind of specific serotype of adenovirus that I'm really all that concerned about you knowing. 
Um, and the thing to know viral conjunctivitis is that the conjunctivitis might be part of the viral prodrome followed by systemic symptoms like fever, pharyngitis, and upper respiratory infection. But sometimes the only manifestation of the disease is the conjunctivitis. So you can have a patient that says, my day and now I woke up with a fever. You can have a patient who just has burning red eyes and never develops a fever. It can kind of go either way. Um, like bacterial conjunctivitis, viral conjunctivitis is highly, highly contagious and it's spread by direct contact with patients. Now here's where that becomes problematic. Eye burns or hurts at some point, you're going to go like this during the day, right? And you're going to touch your eyes and then you're going to go touch a door handle and then somebody else is going to touch that door handle and touch their eyes. And so it's just kind of this constant, um, spreading it amongst people. Um, so contaminated objects and surfaces, fomite essentially for viral conjunctivitis. Um, viral conjunctivitis typically presents as kind of um, an injection and again, watery or mucoserious discharge. Now remember, that's kind of what I said for um, allergic conjunctivitis. The difference is that with viral conjunctivitis, we more associate like a burning, sandy, gritty feeling. Like it's really hard to like, like almost like you went to the beach and stuck your head in the sand and then kept closing your eyes. Like it burns, it hurts, it feels like something is scraping a little bit. It's, it's, the good news is it's normally self-limited. There isn't really anything we do to treat it. It's just very, you know, one to two weeks, it'll go away. It's similar to that of like a common cold. Um, and again, often caused by the adenovirus. Now, this is one instance where viral conjunctivitis is essentially an emergency. Um, and this is viral keratitis or epidemic viral keratoconjunctivitis. Um, so essentially we're moving out of just the conjunctiva into the cornea. So in this case, you have infiva and the cornea. This can be caused by a couple of different viruses, specifically these three strains of adenoviruses, 8, 19, and 37. Um, it can also be caused by herpes simplex virus. That's actually what I'm showing here. This is a fluorescein stain of the cornea. Um, Titus. Um, it can also be caused by varicella, which we haven't learned much about. Varicella is essentially the virus that causes chicken pox, which many of you were either vaccinated for or had as a child. It's also one of the herpes. So you have two herpes viruses that can cause it, and you also have adenovirus. Keratitis, you're going to have pain. Pain, light sensitivity, and vision distortion. And the reason that this one is concerning is that without kind of immediate care, um, keratitis is potentially vision threatening. Um, the to an ophthalmologist to confirm the diagnosis and to decide if glutocorticoids are necessary um, because the inflammation is just so profound that sometimes the best option is to actually knock down the inflammation. Um, so you need to refer them very quickly. Um, and so remember, you're going to have pain, light sensitivity, um, but it is viral, so it might not be as globular. It's just going to be um, kind of more mucoserious than just serious. Um, and again, highly, highly inflammatory. Okay, last but certainly not least, bacterial conjunctivitis. Most of the time, bacterial conjunctivitis is pretty mild. So for example, a couple of weeks ago, it's a Saturday morning, um, we're all just waking up and I hear my son yell from his room, mom. And without even placing a foot on the ground out of bed, I go, darn it. He has conjunctivitis because kind of the hallmark of conjunctivitis is a uh, bacterial conjunctivitis is eye stuck shut in the morning. So my six year old yelling from his bed, that his eyes were stuck shut. And the reason they're stuck shut is because of this purulent, thick, globular discharge. So I got him out of bed and I wiped the discharge away and I was like, let's wait a minute or two and see if it comes back. Because that's the other thing with bacterial discharge just keeps reappearing within minutes of wiping it away. So I take, you know, a warm um, cloth and I wipe it 
from the inner lid to the outer and then I wait a couple of minutes and it comes back and of course you know I pulled down his eyelids and had him look up and it was all bright red in his conjunctiva. You call the doctor and if you're lucky you get in right away and they give you some antibiotic drops and if you're lucky and your kid gets sick on a Saturday they are back to school on Monday without ever having missed a day. Um, so the common causes of it are our friend, Staph aureus, which seems to cause everything, but also Strep pneumo, H flu, uh, Cotarholis. Um, we haven't really talked about this one. It's in the same family, um, essentially as like the Neisseria, but it's another cause. This one is highly, highly contagious. You're going to um, want to wash bedding, wash door handles, wash, wash tablets, anything that you think an infected person may have touched their eyes and then touched again. Um, so there are two places where we actually worry that bacterial conjunctivitis is more than just your run of the mill, go to the doctor and get some drops, bacterial conjunctivitis. And that's hyperacute bacterial conjunctivitis. So hyperacute bacterial conjunctivitis are typically caused by Neisseria gonorrhea. So again, we haven't talked about this one in depth yet, but it's a gram negative um, cocci. And these typically occur in adults and it's more acute and more typical bacterial conjunctivitis. Um, it's uh, require, once again, it requires urgent ophthalmologic evaluation for topical and systemic antibiotics to treat not only the conjunctivitis, but likely this patient also has an STI, so we need to treat them systemically. Bacterial from viral keratitis. Um, this is an infection of the cornea that is caused by bacteria. Um, it most often affects um, contact lens wearers, but patients who don't wear contact lenses may also be affected. Um, the most common cause of bacterial keratitis is actually pseudomonas, which makes sense. It likes its watery environments, like your contact lens case. Um, and then also our friend that causes everything, Staph aureus. Um, so patients with bacterial keratitis are going to experience significant eye pain, redness, and sensitivity to light and blurred vision, as well as so very, very similar to viral keratitis. Um, just like viral keratitis, see an ophthalmologist immediately because if it's not treated properly, it can result in vision loss or blindness. Um, there's one other thing that I'm not going to go into too much depth here, and that's actually retinitis inflammation of the retina um, and that can also be infectious in nature um, this is almost always caused by viral infections so we talked about it with CMV in um, HIV positive patients immunocompromised patients um, HSV can also cause retinitis as can VZV all three of these are members of the herpes family so all three of the herpes family viruses there that we're discussing obviously there are more herpes viruses can cause retinitis but it can also be bacterial or parasitic in etiology but for the most part we're going to focus on the herpes viruses so remember you have four different types infectious non-allergic allergic bacterial and viral and viral and bacterial, you want to pay attention to those keratitises or the hyperacute bacterial conjunctivitis. Bacterial conjunctivitis, most of the time we can treat it with drops. Viral conjunctivitis, most of the time it's self-limited.